last month, a couple of viewers sent me some Forstner bits, and while the Forstner bits are great, this box leaves much to be desired. The bits are just always a mess in here. There's a couple problems with this kind of storage system. The first one is that the, there's too much play going this direction, so the bits just tend to fall down in there. And then the second thing is, is it's really unclear where the bits go because although they're marked by the size of the bit, you actually have to look on here to find which one that is. Eventually that's gonna get worn off. So I spent a good part of yesterday trying to figure out an efficient way of storing these bits. I guess the simplest way to store any kind of drill bit is just to drill a bunch of holes and then just drop them in this way. The problem there is that there's no indication of which bit goes where to keep them in order and I'd like for these to be labeled so I can easily see what size bit it is. So my second thought was to make an indentation of each bit and then use the hole to drop it down in this way so I can easily tell what size bit goes where. This one is probably too deep it makes it a little bit challenging to pull it out of there so I made a shallow one here that seems to work out much better. Then the next question I had is how, where am I going to store this? I could do a wall storage unit up here and just drop them in place like that, but I'm not really a, that fond of stationary storage areas, especially with drill bits, because I like to take them over to where I'm working a lot, and unless I'm working on my drill press, then that would be handy. But I'd like to have it in some sort of a box. But then comes the problem is how big does that box need to be to store all of these bits and how to arrange those things. And that was really what was I was giving a lot of consideration to is how the box would open, how would I access the bits easily. And then suddenly the solution hit me. I've got storage right here in my drill press cabinet. Cabinet. I made these bottom two drawers deeper than those upper drawers and didn't plan on it this way, but it just so happens that it's the perfect size for storing these Forstner bits. I'll use this same kind of system here and I'll just be able to make like a platform on there and then this whole unit is a box that I can take wherever I need it. Once in a while, the world just works in synchronicity. This actually took me way more time than I care to admit to figure out how to arrange all of these holes. So what I've done here is there's these smaller ones down on this side are duplicates because I've got pairs of those. So I'll put in the quarter inch ones here and going this way. And so they're all the smaller bits go this way, this way, this way, and then it goes small and it keeps going large back and forth rather than across, 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 across. And that way it just seems to optimize the amount of space they take up better. And it still leaves me with room back here if I ever need to store any more, but I kind of like having that empty space there. So when I pull the drawer out, I don't have to pull it all the way to the end and have it fall out. So all this is gonna be is a quarter inch plywood here that I'll cut the holes all the way through. And then this will be three quarter inch plywood next layer that has a hole going all the way through this, the size of the shank. And then these two pieces here are just gonna be supports to hold it up there. So this entire unit can be lifted out of the drawer. But I don't really plan on lifting that out of there a lot. I'll just take the drawer wherever I need it. But I do want that removable mostly because of these quarter inch bits, these real small ones where the cutting head here is smaller than the shank. And I'll kind of, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, figure out how that's going to work. But there's always a possibility that a bit could fall in there and get underneath that. And I wanna be able to just get under there if I have to. And plus that quarter inch bit is a little bit shorter than those other bits. So I'll probably have to make something. <laughs> That's kind of what I do, right? I, I make things. The next thing I needed to figure out is how am I gonna line up all of these holes that I wanna drill. And I started actually making the measurements in my SketchUp file and I just thought, that is just gonna be a lot of needless measuring here at my drill press. So I just made a template, got it to be just about full size, and I'll just <clears throat> paste this to my plywood and then I should be able to just line it up. 
I'll attach my template with spray adhesive. So a couple of things I wanted to consider here is how am I gonna line up the big holes on this side and the various size holes with the same size holes on this side for the shanks. And one of the ways I could do that would be to use some carpet tape, double-sided tape, tape these two pieces together, then drill out these holes and then stop when it gets to that backer board. So it just leaves a mark there where I'll know where to drill that hole. But after giving that some thought, I don't wanna do it that way because that would require me to make this go to the exact same depth on each hole in order to prevent there from being different size indentations on the back. It's not that big of a deal, but there may be some variation in where I put the bit into the chuck that could cause that to be off a little bit. I'm probably overthinking this too much. It doesn't need to be that difficult, but I think what I would rather do is drill all of these holes separately. I think it'll help if I make a starter divot on these. That'll help guide that brad point into the center and keep the bit from wandering. Well, there's one down and a whole bunch more to go. I should also point out that when you're using Forstner bits, you should really slow the bit down the bigger they get. These should be going at a much slower speed, but I really don't want to have to keep changing that for each drill bit. One thing kind of nice is on these fish brand bits, they actually have a RPM table on the back here. But if I had a bunch of similar holes are all gonna be the same size, I would definitely change the speed of this drill. The way you change that is by adjusting these pulleys here. And there's a chart right inside this lid that tells you how many RPMs you get depending on the configuration. So this actually gave me an opportunity to test out two different types of Forstner bits since I have them the exact same size. These are both three quarter inch holes. This one, first one I made with that set from Grizzly and then the second one I made with that set from Fish. This is the Grizzly one and it's got like just two blades, a blade here and a blade here that cut. And then this one from Fish has these like wavy, serrated edges. This is different than other Forstner bits I've seen. Other Forstner bits I've seen have had like almost sawtooth edges on there. And these wavy edges actually cut really well. This one cut noticeably faster and cleaner than this one. But as far as the overall final result, they're both fine. I could definitely feel the difference. In fact, that's with the better bit. It actually drilled through my backer board because I couldn't feel when it had broke free of the quarter inch plywood. As far as, you know, tear out or anything, they both look identical. The last set of Forstner bits I bought was probably around 15 or 16 years ago. And it was a really cheap set that I bought at Costco. I don't think Costco has carried Forstner bits since then, but I got a lot of use out of those. I mean, I guess if you were gonna be in a situation where you need to drill a lot of holes, then you'd probably wanna spend a little bit extra on your Forster bits. But for, you know, average weekend woodworker, the cheaper sets seem to be just fine. Another difference on these is that the Grizzly bits have a hexagon shape shank, whereas the other ones have this round shank. And this one, although I, it cuts a lot easier, it tends to slip. This kind of a shank really grabs into the chuck really well. Finally, when you get down to these quarter inch bits, there's a lot different. This Grizzly one continues to use that hex shank, 
but that makes the cutting head smaller than that. And that's the part I, I'm gonna have to figure out how this is gonna fit in. It looks like on the fish bit, the head is the same s diameter as the shank. Okay, I'm gonna let that glue dry, and I think what I'll do is just wrap this video up. I, my intention was to complete this entire project and then release that as a single video, but I had to remind myself that I don't have to think like that with these kind of videos. I can just break those old woodworking maker rules and release these as I'm making them. So I, this thing was already getting pretty long-winded anyway. So I'm gonna finish editing this video, post it on YouTube today, and then tomorrow I'll finish this up. I've got some other odds and ends to share with you, and I'll see you then.